Bears looking deep down the left side. Mendenhall in the end zone. Touchdown! to the house, and the players streaming from the sideline to celebrate with 17 seconds left. Welcome into B-Varsity Live. I'm Zach Ewing with Trevor Horn here in the TBC Media Downtown Studios. Our third to last show of the school year. Counting them down. You got your, your earpiece is, uh, it's like you got a, um, it's like you grew wings. Is that better? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, you can't say it now. What's hey. up? Uh, <laughs> so, we, yeah, we're at the tail end of things here. We're going to focus on baseball and softball today. The section finals coming up tomorrow and Saturday uh, in Visalia for baseball, in Fresno for softball. Uh, unfortunately, the two kind of headliner teams that Bakersfield had, the Stockdale baseball and softball teams, both lost in the semifinals this week, both in kind of heartbreaking fashion, particularly the baseball team. Just uh, incredible game back and forth. Uh, had the winning run thrown out in the bottom of the seventh at the plate after they had rallied to tie the game. They were down four to nothing, down five to two. Came back, tied the game five to five, but had the winning run thrown out at the plate in the seventh and then lost it in eight innings. Had that game been tied after eight innings, there was a sprinkler. The sprinklers came on in the middle of the eighth inning, and so there was like a ten minute delay because of that. Had that game gone beyond eight innings, I think they would have had to call it and have Clovis High come back down today. Well, because there's no lights. The, yeah, there's no so. lights. The sun was setting. They might have been able to start a ninth inning before it got dark, but I don't think they finish it. Uh, and so they they probably they, they want to be able to play complete innings at a time. And so I think they would have had to just say, we're going to have to resume this tomorrow. You can't have guys playing baseball in twilight. Yeah, that's just incredible. And then you look at the softball team on Tuesday – you know, a team that had a 26-game in-section win streak. They hadn't lost since the semifinals against Buchanan. Last May, to a section opponent, they were 29-1 and coming in. And, you know, they just got beat by a veteran team, a Clovis High team that had been to the section finals the last – the previous two years. So now they're going back three. And I think what you saw was you saw a pitcher who was comfortable in the situation against a freshman pitcher like Sydney Hornbuckle, who's been fantastic all year long for Stockdale, mm -hmm. was a little rattled. She hit five batters. She loaded the bases by hitting three consecutive batters. And Clovis got a two-run single on the next at-bat. And then, you know, they, got, they did get the two home runs from uh, Haley Hutton and Vanessa Barron back-to-back at-bats in the fourth inning. But... I think the one thing that you notice with Stockdale baseball and softball is they lose senior leadership and really good senior leadership, but equally they have great underclassmen returning yeah. on both teams. And that's that is true, and they'll be back to try to get over that semifinal hurdle. So the Division One finals in softball, it's Clovis against Central. In baseball, it's Clovis against Buchanan. And as the Central section continues to kind of work on these one-site finals. That's something they're really going to have to look at because the idea was they didn't tell us the schedule until uh, after yesterday's games because they didn't want to have two teams double up like Clovis is in the baseball and softball finals make the fans and the parents choose between going to softball or baseball. They wanted to move one to Friday, give them the opportunity to see both, one Friday night, one Saturday night. They were going to move the softball because with pitch counts and baseball and things, it's a little harder to move. Uh, right. But also I think the baseball facility – well, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, they, they were going to move softball, but Central has graduation Friday night. So that was a conflict as well, and so they couldn't do that. So now Clovis baseball and softball teams are playing at the exact same time in two different cities, uh, which, is, which is unfortunate. And it used to, you know, softball and baseball used to always be on different days so that you could go, if you were a fan of both teams at one school, you could go see both. They're going to have to sort of continue to tweak this system, and I don't know if that means – playing softball on Thursday and Friday and baseball on Friday and Saturday so you don't have the same divisions in the same day. I don't know what it means, uh, but there's going to have to be some some tweaks made. Yeah, something's going to happen, but obviously, you know, baseball and softball is played on the same day during the regular season all year long, right. and softball has their fans, baseball has their fans, but obviously in this moment you'd like the students – the student section, all that kind of stuff. The parents to be able to kind of yeah, it's uh, the big stage. you know back a, you know it's a big stadium. You want to you want them to back both of them. And honestly, you know what, the section probably wants the gate at both too. Right, sure. And they're not getting it. And, and the the problem is you're going to see um, smaller crowds for both teams than you would have otherwise, and they don't right. really deserve that. But that, yeah. anyway, as for Kern County, 
Uh, Independence softball team came through on Tuesday. They beat up on Tatchby 7-1. to So for the second straight year, the Falcons are back in the Division Three softball championship. They will take on Kerman at 1 o'clock on Saturday. And head and coach Mike D'Amato will be yep, a phone call phone. at 2, uh, 2.30 today. We so. will have him at the bottom of the hour, and that will be um, that will be interesting. Mike's an interesting guy, and that'll be uh, and, and really he's just done a great job this year with a team that had a lot coming back from last year. They weren't supposed to be in this position last year. They kind of made a run in the playoffs. This year they were great all year long and beat Tatchby for the third time this year in the semifinals to advance to the championship game. So that they will be the home team against the number 8 seed Kerman Lions. That will be at 1 o'clock on Saturday in Fresno. Same time in Visalia, 1 o'clock, the Highland baseball team uh, is at home, and they are facing number one seed. They are not at home. They are in Visalia facing the number one seed Porterville in that championship game in Division Three. What are your Highlanders had? I mean, they can really swing the bats, and they've, they've ridden that all the way to the championship now. Well, and I think they did one thing that the other teams couldn't do, like we saw Stockdale and Clovis throwing their aces yesterday. Same thing between Garces and Porterville, whom Highland will play in that D3 final is uh, – they didn't start their ace. Yeah, most teams they have to Landon do that Cal- to get to the final. Yeah, but. they went Landon Kauk. And so Cade Sakamoto, who hasn't pitched since last Friday, is going to be fresh and ready to go Saturday afternoon. So it'll be really interesting. And, you know, Fireball's a really good team. Sorry. That's in the D4 finals. I apologize. Porterville is a very good team, but they threw their ace. Yeah. Seven innings yesterday in that 5-1 to one win over Garces in the other D3 semifinal. So it'll be very interesting because they can hit the snot out of the ball, Highland Camp. Yeah, they they, uh, they average nearly 10 runs a game, actually more than 10 runs a game, I believe. And some of that is, is against weaker competition than they're going to see Saturday, certainly. But they can swing the bats. You expect them to score some runs, even in a big ballpark like that at Rawhide Ballpark. Uh, you you kind of gave us a good segue there mentioning Fireball because right before that game, the first game of the day Saturday at 9.30 a.m., uh, will be the Division Four championship game, and that's the third Kern County team playing in a championship this weekend. That's the Wasco Tigers uh, baseball team. First time in a while they've played for a championship. And First time since 1993 that yeah. they've played for a championship. Jeff Weddle and his two players. Jeff was a was a player on that team at Wasco the last time they played, and the last time they won one Amazing. was in 1990. So, I mean, this is really kind of a uh, you know a revolutionary year for them. It's it's great for Wasco. It's great for the baseball team. It's great for the history there uh, to see exactly you know what they can do. They only have two losses coming into uh, Saturday morning's game, and a Saturday morning game at 9:30 is this. Is this travel ball? What is this? Yeah, I mean, that's it, it'll take a little bit of an adjustment because these guys haven't played at that time probably since last summer. Yeah. Uh, or maybe maybe a tournament game over spring break or something. But but that's that's uh, it, it, that will take an adjustment. I've seen those Division Four games up there before, and the team that, that sort of comes ready to play usually has an advantage in those games. You usually see a team score two, three times early in the game and really take control because they're simply ready to go that early in the morning. And right. Wasco, yeah, it's only, what, 45 minutes to an hour away from Visalia, so it, it will be a, uh, a a pretty short drive, but still going to have to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, maybe before it'll be like oh, a school no, day. Oh, no, long before that, because they're uh, going to have to be at the stadium at 8. Well, they're not even going to, um, you know, most of those guys won't even sleep. <laughs> so that, that'll that be the case, too. So Wasco at against Fireball in the D4 championship. That's at 9.30 a.m., followed at 1 o'clock by Highland and Porterville in the D3 game. They do, if, if you plan on going up there and seeing a couple of Kern County teams play, they do empty out the ballpark yep. bef- after each game. So you have to buy two separate tickets to those games just be forewarned. Yep, and those are $10 that. for reserve seating, $8 a general admission, and students with ID and seniors, 6 bucks. Kids under 5 get in for free. And not to forget, up at Fresno State tomorrow, Rosamond, they're in the D5 finals against... Colinga, that game is at 4.30 at Margie Wright Field at Bulldog Diamond at Fresno State. That's the first one, yeah, yep. that's the first that game. So that one. is a fourth Kern County team, I apologize. Rosamond softball also in the uh, championships. I, I, You know, I do – It's it was a little bit of a disappointing semifinal week for Kern County, especially really because of the two Stockdale losses. If it weren't for that, everything else kind of went according to plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taft softball certainly could have beat Kerman. That game went to nine innings. That was an incredible game that yeah. went back and forth. Fraser but, Mountain loss and the Fraser D6 Mountain as softball. the one but seed. It, it, for the most part, it's those Stockdale losses that kind of sour you on, on sort of how Kern County is doing in these diamond playoffs. But I really like the fact that here you have a Wasco team that hasn't won a section title in 27 years, and then you have a Highland Independence teams that have never won central yeah, section titles stories. in baseball or softball. You know, Independence 
Independence is back in it for the second year in a row. And Highland, I mean, this is a storied program going back, what, 48 years? Yeah. And they don't have a central section title in baseball. And you got a guy coaching the team, Rick Sawyer, who's a former Major League Baseball player. I mean, this is a neat story for those schools. And so it'll be really interesting. Then you look at Rosemont tomorrow, a team that, you know, has flirted with – uh, greatness here in the central section, but they're the first high desert team to make it to the Valley Finals yeah. since they moved over in 2014. You, know, you mentioned Wasco and how Jeff Weddle, who we'll talk to next, is is uh, in the house and he's going to talk to us next, but with a couple of his seniors. It kind of reminds me of Wasco's football championship year in 2012, five years ago, uh, where Nacho Martinez, who was a member of the star player of the previous football championship team back in the late 80s, was a coach on that 2012 team, and it was a similar like 23-year gap. So it's it's really this is 24 years since they've been in the final. So we'll see if they can finish the job, but it is a cool story. Uh, obviously, track and field, the big finale next weekend yep. in Clovis, uh, June 2nd and 3rd, the state track and field championships. Uh, and then the other sport that's just wrapped up today for Kern County was golf, and we had one player in the Southern Cal Regionals, that was Garrison and Chavez of Liberty. Yep, started off the day well. He was even par through the first six holes. He started on the 10th, but then ended up bogeying seven of his last, what, 13 holes. Yeah, that front nine did not yeah. treat him well. No, so. it didn't. So he finished with a seven over par, 79. Finished the season. He was the only local at the SoCal Regionals. A couple other news and notes. Bakersfield Christian rising senior quarterback Braden Wingle got his first Division One offer from Northern Iowa, a powerhouse FCS program. First offer for Wingle, six foot five quarterback who broke the central section record last season with the four hundred nine four thousand three hundred ninety one passing yards. So first, I'm, I'm I'm guessing the first of many offers that he'll get. Um, pretty cool note here: Trey Harmon from Foothill, six in the state this year. He ended his season with a six twenty five batting average. He hit safely in all twenty games for the Trojans this year, wow. so that's pretty neat. And then Keone Taylor, the former Garza standout lineman, is a on the watch list for the Remington Award, which is awarded to the top center every year in college football. So uh, Taylor going into his senior year, his fifth year, he's a fifth-year redshirt senior at San Jose State, has started the last 24 games for the Spartans at center. So he's on the watch, a national watch list. Yeah, so congratulations, awesome. Keone. Uh, and, and so as we move forward, the other note I wanted to say, actually, Stockdale has a new athletic director, it's Justin Roberts, our old friend here at P-Varsity, is going to be the AD at Stockdale next Congratulations year. Congratulations to J-Rob. Um, he hasn't started yet. In fact, he's going to be coaching third base for the CSU baseball team here in the WAC tournament in about 45 minutes. But So he's, he's got some duties to finish up first, but starting next school year, uh, J-Rob will be the the new athletic director at Stockdale. So that the congratulations to him as well. So the uh, the school year wrapping up, but first some big games to be played in the next couple of days, including at 9.30 on Saturday morning, the Wasco Tigers baseball team. They're in the house. We're going to talk to them next. Coach Jeff Weddle and a couple of his players, Esteban Rios and Lalo Barraza, they are in the house next here on P-Varsity Live.